Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this week's afternoon program. As part of one of the South African Bar Association's in initiatives, the association hosts a speaker on a weekly basis to deal with a legal topic intended to assist young practitioners with training and development, which is enshrined within the core values that we hold as an organization. <coughs> It is an honor and privilege to host Evidence James from Safli. By way of providing a brief back introduction to Evidence James, who shall be presenting on behalf of Safli, Evidence has cum laude his LLB degree from the University of Port, Port Harry. He has a Master's of Laws specializing in taxation law from the University of Cape, of Cape Town, and he is currently completing his doctorate in philosophy in commercial law, also from the University of Cape Town. He currently is the content editor of SAFLI, the founding editor of Young Lawyers Association of Zimbabwean Law Journal, and a freelance research reviewer and editor. By way of providing a brief introduction of SAFLI, the South African Legal Information Institute, or better known to all of us as SAFLI, publishes legal information for free public access, which comprises mainly of case law from the Republic of South Africa. SAFLI also hosts legal materials from other countries in the region which are obtained through partnerships, collaborative efforts, and more recently through linking to other legal information institutions established in these regions. The, the SAFLI is an online repository and legal information from South Africa that aims to promote the rule of law and judicial accountability by, by publishing legal material for open access in line with the objectives of the global free access to law movement. SAFLI also hosts legal material from other countries, as I reiterated, or rather as I reiterate. SAFLI's projects have been commended by the South African Chief Justices Forum, the South African Parliament, as well as the Office of the Chief Justice. SAFLI was previously a project of the South African Constitutional Court Trust, and is currently in operation from within the Department of, pa of Public Law at the University of Cape Town. It is the largest online free access collection of journals, judgments, and legislation from South Africa. Evidence James from, from SAFLI shall be addressing us on a topic titled SAFLI, its relevance in the South African legal landscape. In terms of housekeeping, during the address, all participants shall automatically be muted. After the address, there will be a question and answer session whereby all participants shall be unmuted so that they are given the opportunity to ask their questions directly to Evidence James. Those participants that have a question relevant to the topic, kindly raise your hand whereby you are given the opportunity to pose such question. Alternatively, type your question within a chat box using the Microsoft Teams platform to pose your question to Evidence James. Without any further ado, I now hand it over to you. Over to you, Evidence. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Ahmed, for that detailed uh, introduction and uh, the background uh, about SAFLI. Um, if you may allow, I am going to share, I've prepared a presentation that I'm going to share um, uh, with colleagues here. Sorry, Evelyn, sorry to interject. Your camera is currently switched off just for No, thanks. Thanks. I see that. So I will share my screen uh, just now. Um, okay. Please confirm that you can see my screen. Yeah, I can see it. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So um, I think uh, I've, I've been introduced um, quite uh, in, a, in a detailed manner. I don't think uh, I need to say anything um, in addition to that. So for today, we're looking at uh, SAFLI and uh, its relevance in the South African landscape. But before I can begin, I would like to say thank you to Ahmed and your team um, uh, for this time and the platform, the opportunity. Um, I'm joining uh, a long list of uh, great you know, speakers that have come before me. So this is really an honor 
thank you so much for that. Um, getting into the presentation, I thought it would be very important to just uh, uh, clarify one thing uh, with the topic. So by landscape, I, I, I will deal with that as uh, referring to you know the justice system and the legal profession. So that relevance of SAFLI would be in relation to that. Um, Ahmed, you have uh, given a very good background of SAFLI, but I think just to update everyone else, I think we still need to update that information that's online. So SAFLI has left um, the University of Cape Town um, from the 1st of April. So now it is a fully registered uh, public benefit organization. Uh, just to update that information. And I think you have given uh, a very good background there. I don't think I need to repeat. So just to get uh, deeper with the uh, presentation, I think when we're looking at the relevance of SAFLI, we, that, you know, that, that entire discussion, it revolves around you know, the provision of, of legal information. That is where the relevance of SAFLI comes in, in relation to the legal profession. SAFLI is there to provide access to legal information, crucial legal information to stakeholders um, in the justice system, in the legal profession. What is more important now is how does SAFLI do that and to what extent to really see how relevant it is. This is what I will be dealing with. So for this presentation, I will talk about uh, the services offered by SAFLI, the user statistics, and uh, how SAFLI is doing things different to give that, uh, you know, a very good picture uh, of what SAFLI is doing and uh, its relevance to the legal uh, profession and the criminal and the justice system. So looking at the role and importance of SAFLI, SAFLI, as you have stated in the, in the introduction, it promotes the rule of law and justice in South Africa. And uh, this is done through the provision of information, legal information. Uh, one cannot um, advance justice and the rule of law without appropriate information, up-to-date information. And uh, so that is exactly where SAFLI comes in. And uh, it, furthermore, uh, SAFLI, it capacitates the public through their provision of information to know and to defend their rights and to check institutions that drive South Africa today. And you would have seen through the judgments that are provided by SAFLI legislation and other material, members of the public and members in the legal profession and other stakeholders in the justice system, they rely on that information. They make reference to that information. Even during the JSC interview, interviews, the commissioners are constantly referring to you know the pub information published on SAFLI, especially when they are interviewing the judges. So that capacitation of the public through the provision of information uh, is really amplified when you look at how SAFLI does this. So SAFLI provides access, a, an online access of downloadable resources. And uh, by providing online access, it means the audience that is reached by our services is quite broad. Uh, people that are using SAFLI are yeah, all over the world. All over the world. And uh, what even makes it better is that SAFLI services, that online information is provided for free. And this is critical for young advocates uh, new and small law firms, uh, attorneys, uh, who in their early days might not have sufficient, you know, financial resources. And uh, 
safely by giving free access. It, it allows these people to thrive in the profession, uh, in the advancement of the rule of law and justice in South Africa. In addition, uh, even uh, legal senior legal practitioners, they use uh, our information, the information that we publish on the website. So it's really a uh, critical. But then what does SAFLI offer? The kind of information that is available from our database. SAFLI publishes the largest free access collection of South African legal information. And this includes judgments from all courts, except magistrates court, courts, and judgments from tribunals that are usually not available, you know, easily accessible uh, to the public. You have legislation, free access journals, daily court rules, court rules. Those are your uh, rules for the magistrate courts and the uniform uh, court rules for the superior courts. You've got municipal bylaws, government gazettes, national and provincial English legislation, and then of, of course a selection of uh, Afrikaans judgments, law site, and Rule 16a notices. But the, the importance of SAFLE and its relevance has really been, uh, you know, highlighted during the you know the COVID pandemic, where there has been a, a dramatic increase in the in the traffic of people and users visiting our website and this is um, you know it can be understood from the restricted mobility and access that people have had during uh, the COVID-19 pandemic uh, with many universities uh, being closed and students and uh, even other professionals not having access to libraries so people have you know, relied on SAFLI increasingly uh, during this time. And uh, the next next slide will really illustrate uh, that increased the reliance on SAFLI during um, this crisis, this COVID crisis. And you will see here we have got information. Uh, this is user statistics for the year 2019 and 2020. Uh, if we look at uh, unique user, unique users that are visiting, uh, that were visiting SAFLI database. In 2019, there was a 2 million, uh, 2 million 84,474. And that increased to 3 million 25,908 users, making a difference in terms of percentage this was an increment uh, of 45.16%. It's almost a, a half increase of users that are visiting a, a SAFLI database. In terms of information pages that were viewed, there were 80, 82 million pages that were viewed in 2019, and that increased to 106 million pages uh, that were viewed in this 2020 was, you know, the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, which means there was a 24 million uh, difference in terms of uh, the pages of information that were viewed, and making it a 29.27% increase. And you can really see uh, that many people, an increasing number of people were relying on SAFLI. Uh, during this you know, COVID pandemic. And if we look at the month, uh, 2020 month index of, of users, you, you will see there has been a dramatic increase, especially from April here, from one, 178,594 users, and the numbers were going up to 200,000, 300,000, and making a total uh, number of users to be, uh, that is 3 million, uh, yeah, that, that's over 3 million, uh, over 3 million, 3 million, uh, let me see there, yeah, so it's, it's the same number here, 
three million twenty five thousand nine hundred eight uh, number of users that we had for last year. Well, who uses Safly? Safly serves a wide range of, uh, of, of you know guests. It's it, it is used by many many people, and this includes not limited to advocates, attorneys, law firms, um, law students, they use it, professionals in other fields, academics, paralegals, members of the judiciary, journalists, government officials, members of the public, they use uh, SAFLI. So SAFLI is really uh, important uh, in South Africa, especially when you look at the justice system. And as you can see here in this slide, these are real-time screenshots uh, captured from our website, looking at uh, who is using our information and visiting uh, the website at different times. And this was uh, just yesterday, the 6th of October, 2021. And uh, one screenshot was taken at 11 a.m., the other at 9 p.m. But as you can see, there is constant traffic uh, on our website. And, uh, you know, Safli cannot afford uh, to go down or to be offline or even to have, uh, you know, systems as challenges because people really rely on Safli. But what is Safli doing different? in really uh, pushing you know the limits of what is possible in providing uh, you know access to free access to legal information there is no need for one to log in uh, on safli so it's an it's a it's an open website one just has to go there you can go on google and uh, go straight to the safli website get the information and the information available on our database is fully searchable, printable, and shareable straight from, from the website. And even more importantly, even after hours and within short hours, uh, you know, when uh, judgments are handed down, we provide, you know, updates and the uh, uploads of those judgments, especially those of the Supreme Court of Appeal and the Constitutional Court. And unlike some other databases, uh, SAFLI also provides access to unreportable judgments. Yeah. Also, SAFLI provides access to rulings, to rulings from tribunals, and usually these are hidden from the public. Um, they are not really accessible to the public. Um, like the special rulings from the rulings of the special tribunal, the water tribunal. So all these are available on SAFLI in our database. And in, in, in certain instances, it's difficult for, for people to know what information you have. So we're taking access, we're taking the promotion of access to information to the next step by ensuring that we constantly update the public through social media uh, platforms, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook of any new information that is coming through, especially judgments, you know, that are handed. So we, we update uh, our audience and the public of these uh, information and judgments that will be coming through. As they come, we, we, we upload them and, and update uh, the public. That way they will know that there is what information and where is it available. And so SAFLI also continues to broaden the, the information um, that is available on the website by continued collaborations, partnerships, with contributors of uh, information, legal information, foreign, domestic, governments, just to ensure that, you know, people get more and more information uh, for free. 
so this is it uh, colleagues uh, from me um, now safli since safli now is a fully registered uh, non-profit organization it relies on the donations from the public so if you find it in you please donate to safli so we continue to provide free access to the public and to promote rule of law and justice in south africa so thank you so much this will be the end of my presentation thank you so much evidence um I'm just going to open up the platform for a brief question and answer session. Just give me one second to do that. Okay, evidence. I thank you and your team at Safli for such an informative address. I have now opened the platform for a brief question and answer session. I reiterate to those participants that have a question relevant to the topic, kindly raise your hand whereby you will, give, you will be given the opportunity to pose such a question. Alternatively, type your question within the chat box using the Microsoft Teams platform to pose your question therein. Now, Evidence, I'm gonna start off with my question. Now, while you are, uh, or while you do have the ability to share screen, the what I, and forgive me for my ignorance, is there's an advanced search feature on Safley and I'm not too familiar with it. Would you be able to guide us through that uh, by sharing your screen? Uh, evidence, you muted, sorry about that. Okay, yeah, I'm saying come again uh, by advanced feature, search feature, you say. Mm -hmm. would, you, would you be able to demonstrate to us how to use that by, by way of sharing your screen? You wanna use, uh, please come again. I just wanna get, what are you asking? What your question? I am familiar that Safli has an advanced search feature. However, I'm not familiar on how to use it. So for the benefit of myself and others, would you be able to, by way of sharing your screen, just briefly go through how how to how to do that? No, thanks. Um, yeah, I, I would have really loved to do that. Um, but unfortunately, I haven't used this feature um, for me to be able to demonstrate at this point yeah can you be able to move to to, to come in come again karina would karina be able to yeah. come yes let, let me see uh, can you unmute here probably she at least is muted i don't know if she'll be able to come in with this one so i think she's unmuted now yeah. hello hi karina one um yeah i mean i can i can gladly help but uh, would i be able to share my screen you would you would okay is there anything in particular you want to um search ahmed give me an example right uh, can i uh, there's actually something that came to our desk recently regarding medical negligence so could i have something on medical negligence uh, say from a motor vehicle accident okay Can you see my screen? We can, we can. Okay. So if you're going to use uh, Safli's advanced search, you just um, click on advanced search. And so so what um, we do is we use the words and or um, as, as uh, advanced search operators. Um, so say you said medical. Negligence. Medical negligence. Sorry. Um, and then you're going to say um, any of these words. OK. And you're going to say you're going to click on safely all databases and you say search. Now you'll see the difference that's. Oh, hang on a sec. Did I spell it right?
So it gives you, say, 284 uh, documents, okay? I'm sure we have a lot more than that. So you can either refine this by date. So if you click on by date, then it'll sort, uh, sort it out for you as to the latest document we have uploaded. In this instance, we've got uh, SCA judgment uploaded. Or you can sort it by database. So you can say you want to restrict it. You just want to look at um, North Gauteng, for instance. You just want to look at what medical negligence documents appear in North Gauteng. So in this way, you can filter it and you can go to, do we have anything for North Gauteng? Okay, let's say South Gauteng, because that's the one that's in my eyesight. So here you see 41 documents. So you're refining your search from 284 to 41, for instance, um, or by title. So this will uh, sort it alphabetically for you. Um, so you, you're not happy going through 41 documents, right? So you're going to say, and uh, give me a, another uh, phrase, another Fold. You can a motor vehicle, uh, so motor uh, so MVA or motor vehicle accident. Let's let's try. Let's just try motor vehicle and see what happens. Sorry, this thing is very finicky at times. Perhaps instead of saying motor vehicle, perhaps you can say medical negligence and um, codified it to um, medical negligence shoulder. Sorry, medical negligence? Shoulder, shoulder. Shoulder, like that? Yes. Okay, let's see. I probably didn't find anything um, with the motor vehicle. So again, I'm going to go through the same thing, but I, I just wanted to use to use the Boolean search operators to show you that if you use medical negligence and uh, say theft, oh, no, sorry, not theft, um, maybe death. Let's let's be more good about it. Uh, let's try it and see what happens. Okay, so now you're getting more documents uh, with that. So again, you can sort out by date. You're not happy with going through 533 documents. You can sort it out by date. You can sort it by relevance. So in terms of relevance, it shows you the most um, accurate document on SAFLI that would contain those three words. Um, I'm not sure if that, that uh, really answers your question, but I'd be more than happy to um, share a training video we did on using search uh, on Safly. In fact, it's uploaded on Safly's YouTube channel um, that shows you how to use the actual search functionality on Safly. Um, it's just, uh, if there's any other keywords, I'll be happy to, to go through it now. But yeah, if, if you're happy to do that. I think I, think I get the point. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Karina. Sure. Thank you. Uh, you can just stop sharing your your screen. If I... Thank you. There's a there's a thank you, Karina, and thank you, evidence. There's a question from Mohammed Patel. Mohammed Patel, you can simply unmute your mic and or your camera. Thank you, evidence, and thank you, Karina. Um, rather interactive and a brilliant question from Umid as always. Um, evidence, firstly, thank you for sharing the, uh, for taking your time out today and uh, sharing your presentation with us. It was rather informative. Um, I, for one, have been using Safly from around about 2012, which was my first year of law school. Yes. It was on our law portal, and um, there was Safly and a number of other legal resources, and uh, always found Safly to be very user friendly. And as uh, Karina was uh, showing us now, it's very simple to use. And even for, uh, for, for a first year law student, I know I was bombarded with keyword searches and the like. And Safi was one of the first uh, platforms I used and where I got relevant and uh, relevant information in relevant case law. Yeah. So it's a bit of a comment, uh, Evan, it's not very much of a question. Yeah. The question I had, but you asked at the end of your presentation was with regards to your funding. 
uh, I was and I had no idea that you could actually sponsor or uh, donate to uh, Safley. And I was thinking going forward, is Safley uh, registered as an NPO where we can get some sort of certification afterwards to send to the taxman? And uh, secondly, um, in, with regards to progression, will Safley be um, incorporating into other sites like having an app or something along those lines where we can uh, have it on our phones for easy access? Now that we're in the digital age and uh, being in courts and the like, having an app or something that we could peruse through without um, going to a different search tab and saving documents separately, which will be much more accessible on the tab, if that's in the pipeline for safety. Thank you, Evelyn. No, thank you, uh, thank you. Uh, so, so with the first, um, and yeah, I, I do agree with you. So I've used safely from my first year. Uh, it's 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 been really you know it's a friendly uh, site to use. Uh, it's a go-to site. You know I, I would really consider it a one-stop shop. You know for legal information. Um, I would always run to safely download the information that I need uh, with so much ease. So with the first um, question, yes, you get uh, a tech certificate um, upon donation uh, to safely. And yes, we do have some details on the site. But on the second one, rather, because those are more of planning. Currently, we don't have a, a, an application. But I would love to invite Karina to come in if she has got the, you know, these kind of plans in, in her head. Karina. Thanks, Evidence. Um, thank you very much for that uh, awesome com uh, comment. Sorry, I didn't uh, get uh, your name. Apologies for that. But um, it's so it's so nice to hear that people um, use Safly and uh, that we've been able to to help so many students along the way, you know, um, in their journey and their studies, and even as you become candidate attorneys and uh, lawyers, advocates, you know, it's it's um, good to know that you continue using Safly. Um, as evidence said, we will issue Section 18A certificates because we are a registered uh, public benefit organisation. Um, regarding technology, um, so we do have an app. Uh, it's on Google Play. Uh, it is updated, but we're trying to move away from it. So we're busy developing a responsive website that would scale to your screen, um, whichever device that you're using. In one of Evidence's slides, you would have seen that um, majority of our users are mobile and desktop. In fact, it's it's an even split. Um, and even as you see at 9 p.m. at night, in fact, the mobile users go up because um, I don't know what it is, but people seem to be relaxed at home and uh, accessing judgments via their phones. Uh, yeah, who knew reading a judgment would be relaxing? Um, but yeah, so, so yeah, we definitely are working on um, improving the look and feel of Safly um, in terms of its responsiveness uh, scaled down to all devices. Uh, hopefully that should be coming up in the next two weeks or so. We're almost ready. Um, yeah, and then uh, as we go along, as funding improves, as funding increases, we'd look at uh, advancing our search functionality, for instance, and advancing like using artificial intelligence. I mean, that's the next big, big thing. Uh, within Safly, how we can apply this on top of Safly, either doing case summaries or, you know, these are things that we'd love to get involved in, but it's all funding dependent. Thank you. Thank you, Karina. Thank you, Karina. Thank you, Evidence. There's a question from Bart Ford. Bart Ford, you can simply unmute your mic and or your video camera. Thank you so much, uh, Evidence and and uh, Karina. Um, I, I want to make a comment first and then list my three questions. I think the first comment I want to make is that uh, you probably don't get uh, feedback from users all the time like you have in this platform, but I want to say thank you so much for Safli. And I would like to share a particular instance in court well, a, a few years ago where uh, my opponent was arguing a matter in respect of a case that I presented on condonation. And it so happened that 
as he did his presentation, Safli had just posted an updated LAC decision, which uh, in respect of which that particular judgment had been set aside. And it was so nice to pull up my phone and pass it around up to court. This is now pre-COVID uh, to court for the court to see that in fact the judgment had been set aside. So just so that you know how useful it is and how beneficial we find it as practitioners. In fact, I was in court today and I had referred extensively to a number of judgments I found on, on SAFLI. Now, now for my questions, the first one is, at what point would SAFLI become uh, a portal for reported judgments? At the moment, we, we normally refer to it as saying the ju judgment is, you can find it on, on SAFLI, but it's not regarded as a reported judgments. I'd like to know at what point would, would the SAFLI judgments or judgments that are published on, on SAFLI be regarded as reported? The second question I have for you and Karina is the, the, the only drawback that I find in, in, in as far as SAFLI is concerned is that one can't always easily discern whether or not a judgment has in fact been overturned. When you look at a particular judgment, when reading it, there's nothing indicating to you, like with some of your, your competitors, if I can call them that, or your co-collaborators in, in this particular field, uh, whether or not the judgment had been overturned or what the status of that judgment is. And then my last question has to do with uh, articles where uh, practitioners like myself who write articles would like to make that available to SAFLI on a free of charge basis, what is the process that one should follow for, for that to, to take place? Thank you so much, Evidence. Thanks, Karina. Thank you so much, Mr. Ford, uh, for the wonderful feedback and, uh, and, and for the question. That would be a game changer indeed to get a, a judgment popping up when you're on the stand. Uh, so that really makes a huge difference. So thank you so much for that. Uh, Karina, I think I'll just make one comment. You handle the bulk of these questions because I think you, you would be better suited for that. I think uh, with regards to, you know, judgments uh, being reportable, or yeah, we do have judgments that are reportable. Some of them are marked reportable, but you would probably only see it upon downloading or when the judge would have put uh, a heading that says reportable, so it's, it's kind of a, a mix up. But uh, Karina, you can you can check on this. Thanks, uh, evidence, and thanks, uh, advocate uh, Ford. Um, really nice feedback again. Um, so reported. Um, as far as I know, judgments from Safli are admissible in court. Um, but I'm not, I, I hear what you're saying about like the law reports, when would we, we do that? And I'm not sure if that's, if it's really necessary, um, but you know, as, as you know, we do what we can with the limited funding that we have. Um, and, and I think during COVID we've seen, um, how important SAFLI has become in that judges were handing down judgments. Uh, opening with the line that says um, released electronically to both parties and to SAFLI for publication on the website. Um, so if, if that doesn't speak volumes of, of um, where the judiciary sees SAFLI and its role in uh, reporting the judgments, then wow, uh, <laughs> you know, I don't know. But, but I, I hear what you're saying, and that's definitely something that we are thinking about um, and it's just, yeah, with funding constraints, it's just not something that um, we, we're looking at at the moment. And the same thing goes for uh, the, it's actually very interesting that you mentioned that because in a team meeting two weeks ago, I think it was, I spoke about this very same issue. I was like, but guys, how do we differentiate? How do we show uh, someone reading this judgment that it's been overturned or it's been um, 
it's gone to appeal or whatever the case may be. So it's definitely something that's on our radar and we are looking into it. So we're thinking in terms of our limited funding available, um, how do we help? So I think we did this for one judgment where we, um, if you're familiar with Safley's anonymization protocol, we generally have this bar on the top of the judgment that says it's been anonymized in line with Safley's policy. So we're thinking that where we follow the judgment that has been overturned, we might start including that on the top of the judgment so that the reader is aware that uh, this has been uh, overturned. Um, regarding articles, if it's free, absolutely, you're welcome to send it to us. We'll be more than happy to publish it. Um, uh, as you know, Safli is a, a free uh, access provider, so we don't generally engage in anything that attracts commercial value. Um, and if it's for free uh, access, then absolutely, please email me, please um, contact me, and by all means, we'll, we'll try to publish it. The more information we make available, the better for all of us. Thanks, uh, Karina. I think uh, probably with the, just to clarify rather, if, if I may uh, say that, does Advocate Ford mean there has to be some indication um, on the side that this is a reportable or a unreportable judgment? Would, would it be what he means and would that be possible uh, to do? That immediately when someone searches and opens a judgment, it's, it's already indicated before they even open it that it's a reportable or unreported judgment, probably on the citation. Yeah. So if, if I can just clarify that evidence. Yes. So, so at the moment when we speak about reportable judgments or reported judgments, we generally refer to judgments that appear within the Butterworths family of law reports yes. or, or SA family of law reports. Yeah. I'm saying there's nothing that would prevent Safli from presenting the judgment insofar as the citation is concerned to say, well, this is a judgment that's reported on the Safley website. And by indication of, of, of the citation in in or on the on the judgment, it would be sufficient proof that it is in fact considered reportable as opposed to limiting reportability to one or two or possibly three publications. Okay. And then just Kirina, forgive me for taking so much of your time. Would it not be useful? To, to invite engagement from, from practitioners. For instance, if I read a case and I, for instance, know, almost like you have this ways uh, map thing that can you can update. Well, if I come across a case as a practitioner and I know that, oh, but this case has in fact at meta admin set aside to allow some form of interaction with yourselves, where I can drop you an email or a note or or something to the effect to say, in fact, this 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 has been overturned and attach find a copy of the the um, labor appeal court or the SEA decision in that regard. Yeah, absolutely. We'd welcome that because um, it it just makes our life easier as well. I mean, you know, we don't have capacity, um, and yeah, it absolutely we'd welcome it. Um, by all means, the more we engage, the better. And uh, we'd like to keep communication open between between the profession and ourselves, because primarily our biggest user is the legal profession. So yes, we, we definitely want to engage more. And if you have any ideas as to how we can go about doing this, we I'm, I'm happy to talk offline. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, before I hand it over to the uh, to the questions posed within the within the chat box, Karina, would you like to add anything to evidence's address? Um, Ahmed, uh, no, I think I think you did a, a really good job. Um, yeah, just uh, I, um, I, I realize now that we need to update the website, but I suppose I kind of left it for when we launch the new look and feel um, safely. Uh, so yeah, just to reiterate that safely is now a non-profit organization and a registered uh, for public benefit organization. We welcome donations. You know, um, this isn't a, a service that we provide that um, even though it's free, we do 
have expenses that we need to meet, and all donations will uh, attract, uh, we will give a Section 18A tax certificate. Um, yeah, and just thank you. Thank you so much for this platform, and thank you for allowing us this opportunity. It's indeed a pleasure. Thank you. Over to Karishma for the questions that are posed within the chat box. Okay, so there's two questions that have been posed. The first one is from Amid. What is the turnaround time post the judgment being granted to such judgment subsequently being uploaded on the SAFLI database? Thank you, thank you, Karishma, for that. So it, it, it really depends. You know, that would be the best answer I'll tell you. And uh, we really endeavor to upload judgments as soon as possible. So you'd see if the judgment is handed down, let's say after hours, then unless it's really a constitutional court judgment or an SCA judgment or one of those very, very important judgments, then you'd have it the following day, right? And because also uh, we don't work during the weekend, but we, we, as you can see, uh, we have got judgments going up online throughout the day because you've got people are just waiting for emails. We wait for emails. And sometimes with certain courts, they would send a bunch of 20 judgments and those can be uploaded at once. So one would have to probably take some time in, in uploading those um, yeah, in certain instances. But judgments, they we put them online as soon as possible uh, as we can. Perfect. And then the second question is from Vishana Mukhen. I think Karina wants to come in as well. Eh? I, see a, I see a hand. I'm so sorry. Can I just add to what Evidence said? Um, just to, to add to what he said, like, um, so we endeavor to put it online within the hour, especially the SCA and the Constitutional Court judgments. But the, the, what I'd like everyone to be made aware of is that not all the courts send us their judgments timelessly. So like the Eastern Cape and North Gauteng, for instance, North Gauteng is the busiest court, but they send it to us in batches on a weekly basis. So not when it's handed down. So we can't get it online if we're not receiving it, you know? So it's those courts that, us, that give us a constant flow as soon as it's handed down, it goes up immediately. But the others where they send it to us in batches, it takes a little bit longer to, to go online. And we keep emailing them, send us the judgments as soon as it's handed down. But it's just something we're not getting right. But those that do send it to us, it goes online as soon as possible, uh, within the hour, especially for the SCA and the Constitutional Court. OK, thank you. The second question is from Vishana Mukhan. Hi, thank you for an informative presentation. Regarding the judgments passed on SAFLI, from how far back can judgments be found? Example, from which year? And does it vary per court? Evidence, you muted. Your mic's muted. Sorry about that, Evidence. Your mic is, your, your mic is still muted. Oh, no, thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, so if, if you look at the side, um, it, as to how far back you, you, you get judgments, it really depends with, uh, with what court they, but judgments are all arranged uh, under, you know, in terms of the court and in terms of uh, the year and months as well. So it really depends. Uh, if I can just give an example here uh, quickly. If you, if you look at the Constitutional Court, of course, judgments that goes back all the way back to 1995, you know, and, and they are all uh, grouped in, in months as well. I don't know if that answers um, that question. Indeed. Uh, there's a, I think we're just going to wait on uh, Krishma. I think uh, Bishana is, uh, is is typing, so I just want to see if you have answered, you have indeed answered the question. Uh, Evidence and Karina, on behalf of the South African Power Association, 
We sincerely thank you and your team at Safli for, for such an informative address and the work that you, are, that you are doing. These sessions are recorded and the recordings can be found upon the South African Bar Association website, that being www.rsabar.net. I thank you. Thank you, Evidence. Thank you, Karina. Thank you, Akwant. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone.